Welcome to our lesson on using the 3D sketch plane. Let's create a new 3D sketch. I'm going to begin with a construction line along the X axis. Right click and select. Now let's insert a plane. SolidWorks asks us to select a reference. I'm going to skip this step. Since I didn't specify any reference, the plane is currently free floating. The status bar indicates that the plane is underdefined. Let's click on the Property Manager icon. A minus symbol appears next to Plane 1. That's also an indication that it's underdefined. Let's double click on the graphic area to deselect everything. Now select the construction line and the plane and add an on plane relation. And click OK. Next, I'm going to position the plane at a 45 degree angle to the top plane. We select the top plane, Plane 1. And now let's enter a value of 45 degrees. OK. Right click and select to close the dimension tool. Our plane is now fully defined. When I go to the property manager, I see that plane 1 no longer has a minus symbol next to it. Now if I select this plane, and for example activate the line tool, we can work the same way as we did in the previous lesson. Right click and select. And let's undo. If I double click the plane, it becomes active. When I activate the line tool, the triad doesn't appear, nor do the plane indicators. That's because right now we're only sketching on the active plane. And let me finish sketching here. Right click and select. One more tip I wanted to mention about creating a 3D sketch. Rather than creating an entire sketch and then afterward applying dimensions and relations, it's much easier to create a few sketch segments, define them, and apply relations to make the sketch fully defined, and then move on from there. So let's take my advice and apply some dimensions here now. This side will be 50 millimeters. OK. The longer side will make 100 millimeters. OK. The sketch remains underdefined. I need to add relations. If I grab this corner, I can see where the problem is. Let me shift select these two lines and add a perpendicular relation. OK, and now our sketch is fully defined. To deactivate the plane, just double click in the graphic area. The plane remains visible, but no longer active. Let's insert another plane. For the first reference, I'll select this point. And for the second reference, this line. The plane will basically go through this point and then be normal to the line. Let's click OK. Notice the sketch is still fully defined. When we go to the property manager, no minus symbol appears next to plane 3. And of course, that means the plane itself is fully defined. Once again, to activate the plane, plane 3 is currently our active plane. Let's deactivate it by clicking elsewhere in the graphic area, and we reactivate it with a double click on the plane. Just activated the line tool. I'm going to create a line sequence here. And snap to this point. Right click and select to close the sequence. Now let's add relations and dimensions. We'll shift select these two lines and add an equal relation. Now dimensions, 55 millimeters here, except to understand what else you need to add to make your sketch fully defined, simply grab a point and drag it. If you're able to drag the point freely, then you'll need to constrain it with a dimension or relation. I'm going to use one more sketch plane to fully define this sketch. The first reference will be the right plane. Parallel relation. The second reference will be this point, and click OK. Click in the graphic area to deselect everything. Now I'll select this point and the plane I just created, and I'll add an on-plane relation. The status bar and the sketch line color indicates that the sketch is now fully defined. Let's create a few more lines now. Let's create one along the z-axis. Saying z-axis sounds weird, that's why I say z. I'm going to show you a common mistake here. I want to show you how to recover from a very common boo-boo. 
What I'm trying to do is create a line along the x-axis, but I forgot to click the tab key to switch planes. Let's right-click and select to end our line sequence. From this perspective here, the sketch looks fine. But when we try to rotate the sketch, the problem becomes clear. So let's fix this problem. Let's select and delete this relation. Then we select the line that we messed up. From Add Relations, click along X. OK. Now let's grab this point here and drag it back out accordingly. OK, let's take a look. It looks fine now. Let's apply dimensions. This one will be 80 millimeters. Accept. Right click and select to close the dimension tool. Let's select this point and plane 5. Add an on plane relation and click OK. The sketch is once again fully defined. Let's add some fillets now. We'll get a warning message from SolidWorks about having to adjust the geometry to satisfy the equal relation. Let's just click yes and continue applying fillets. And last one here. Let's click OK. The sketch is fully defined. Let's exit the sketch. Now let's insert a reference plane. I'm going to select this line and this point. The preview shows us a plane that's normal to this line, which goes through this point. Let's click OK. And now let's insert a sketch on our new plane. Right click, Insert Sketch. Activate the Circle tool. Let's place a circle about here and dimension it. 10 millimeter diameter. OK, there we go. 10. OK. The sketch is fully defined. Let's exit. We'll hide plane 1. Right click, hide. And let's go to the Surfaces tab. Swept Surface tool. First, we select the profile for the sweep and then the path. Here's our preview. Let's click OK. And this concludes our lesson about working with a 3D sketch and sketch planes as the foundation for your surface modeling.